OpenAI is launching their GPT store next week, so today I thought we can take a look at some of my GPT ideas, how you can connect an API to your GPT, and what kind of GPTs I think have any chance of making some money on this store. So yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so these are basically how I have thought about this GPT store. So we all know that there's a very low barrier to entry, right? If you have some experience with ChatGPT, you can basically create your own GPT. That means that we probably be flooded this store with different kind of GPTs. It can be hard to separate which one is good, which one is bad. I don't know if the market is going to correct that. but uh, And if you find a good one, it should be super easy to copy it. And this means that kind of the discoverability is going to be key. Is there some kind of SEO? Is there a search functions? Is there a kind of leaderboard like popular apps and stuff? I guess so. And can you kind of pay for that spot? I don't know. And who will actually pay for a GPT? Uh, I know my personal opinion is that it has to be really good if I'm going to pay something for it. Or I'm not sure. Is this something like if you have the subscription, the plus subscription, if you use it, then the creator will get paid. I haven't really looked into that. Uh, but anyway, I think that it's going to be like highly competitive. And I don't know how easy it is to going to make money on this. Like it's going to be interesting to see at least. Uh, but today I kind of created these three examples of things I might think can make it. So I think we're just going to start on example one. And this is kind of to solve a very specific problem in a very efficient way. So I think we're just going to go back to ChatGPT and look at a GPT I kind of did create to try to fulfill this. Okay, so this is the encode GPT. So basically this creates an encrypted message and a key to unlock the message. So basically what we want to do here is to ask the user what kind of message they want to encrypt. And when they had submitted the message, we have our Python code here. We're actually going to encrypt this message using something called Fernet, I think. And we get a key and instruct the user on how the message can be decoded. And to do that, we kind of link it to another um, GPT we created. And we can basically go to this GPT. So this is the decode GPT. And here we kind of ask for encoded message and the secret key. And we run the Fernet script again, but here we can kind of replace the key and we can take the encrypted message. And yeah, we can just print the decoded message back to the user. So this is kind of combining two GPTs. Uh, I haven't seen that before, but uh, yeah, let's test it out. So basically how to use this, we just say hello, right? And then it's going to ask for, I think, the secret message, right? So I want to encrypt this message. Meet me in Central Park tomorrow at 11.30 uh, a.m. by the Red Bench. Bring the goods. KF. Okay. So hopefully now it's going to run our Python code, right? So you can kind of see it takes the user's message. It kind of converts it into, yeah, this encrypted kind of message. And we kind of need a key too. And you can see we have the key and we have some instructions to decode this message. You should... Go to the following GPT, say hello, and follow the instructions provided there. Okay, so we can go to this GPT, we can say hello. So we're just going to follow these instructions. If you have an encoded message and secret key, please provide them. Yes, so we have a message here and we have a key. So like this, right? Okay, so let's try that. And let's see if we can decode this message. So if you look here now, we kind of use the Python code we provided. We have the key, we have the message. And yeah, probably this is going to decode our message. Uh, I don't know. This is not a good idea, right? But just an example of what kind of uh, GPT that can solve a very specific problem, right? Uh, so you can see here, meet me in Central Park tomorrow uh, by the red bench. Bring the goods, KF. Yeah, so this works, so I wouldn't bet on this GPT, but this was just an example, right? Okay, so for my second example, I kind of have this offer a third party access with a GPT. So I don't know if this even is allowed on the GPT store, but either way, I wanted to showcase it. Uh, this means that we have to use an API. Uh, I'm going to cover that, I think, in the next step. But now I just want to show you how this works and kind of how I set it up. But in the example three, I'm going to show you kind of how you can set this up to use these actions. But let's just head back and let me show you this kind of GPT I created for this. 
Okay, so I call this Mistral GPT. So basically we can run Mistral AI. So you can see instructions is return the response to the user query using the Mistral API. Always use the Mistral Tiny model. So that is basically the old instructions I gave it. But if we scroll down here, we have something called actions. So if I click on this, you can kind of see I have used some kind of action here. And to do that, we need this open API schema here. So I created this. I'm going to show you how you can do that afterwards. But you can see here we have an available action. And that is create a chat completion using kind of the Mistral API. So before I show you how we do this, uh, how you can set up this action, I just think we're just going to test out this Mistral API and actually see if we can call the API and get a response from the Mistral API's tiny model, I think. Okay, so basically now, Hello, what are the best reasons to use an open source LLM? So let's just run this. So basically, this is gonna start an action now, I think. So if we see this run now, hopefully this will call, cause an action to start. Yeah, you can see this. And it asks us, do you want to talk to the Mistral API? And we can kind of see here. So the content is gonna be, yeah, kind of our query here, right? Uh, so we can confirm this. And it's kind of starting the action. And this is now going to talk to the API for Mistral AI that we kind of set up. And let's see if we get a response here. Yeah, you can see. Here are some of the best reasons to use uh, open source source more. So you can see cost effective. So yeah, basically we did get a response from our Mistral AI API inside the OpenAI GPT. <laughs> so yeah. That's a bit funny. So we're kind of using uh, some kind of open source LLM inside of the GPT. So you can kind of see, yeah, we don't see the response here, but clearly we got a response. So that works. Uh, I think in the next step, I kind of want to show you how you can set up these um, APIs. So I think that's going to be key to developing like a strong GPT that actually can make you some money on this store. Yeah, like I said, I think the GPTs that will actually make money and be successful on this store are those that are gonna make a hard problem easy to solve using this API, some kind of special knowledge base, uh, some kind of special Python code, I don't know. But I don't think it can be very superficial and easy to create. It has to be something that solves kind of a harder problem in an easy way. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how I kind of set up my action for the Mistral API and that how you can do this too. Okay, so when we are creating a new GPT, down here we have the option to create a new action, right? So if we can click here, you can see we need something called an open API schema. And for this, I did create something called uh, a GPT called open AI schema. So this will create an open AI schema for actions in custom GPTs. So basically how you can use this is uh, yeah, you can just start with saying hello, right? And uh, let's say we wanted to use this cat API um, here. So basically what we can do now is uh, this will ask for some code or API documentation. So we can go into the documentation here for this cat API. And basically we can just copy all of the documentation here, right? Let's copy that. Okay, so we can head back to the OpenAI schema. Uh, here is my docu. Okay, let's paste that in and let's run it. And here you can kind of see, so based on this information you provided, I'll create an OpenAI JSON schema and JSON format. Okay, so if you scroll down here now, all the way down, you can see we ended up with this schema here. So basically, all I had to do now is just copy this schema here, right? We can head back to our newly created GPT. We can just paste the schema in here. Okay. So that is kind of what I did here for the my cat API. So you can basically see, uh, yeah. And then we get these available actions down here. So we can do like a random cat image search. And before we have to do that, uh, you actually will need the API key. So I went ahead, I found my free API key. I went up to authentication and in this API key, I selected bearer, I pasted in my API key and I clicked save. So now we are actually uh, ready to test this. So, and if you get some kind of error, it will kind of show up down here so you can correct it. 
But uh, if we go back here now, you can see cat GPT. So this is going to find images of cats. So we're just going to ask the user what kind of cat they want an image from. Use the action to fetch the image for the requested cat and show the image of the cat to the user. And for this, we are going to use the cat API. So let me save that. And yeah, let's go test it. So let's just go. Hello. Can I see an image of a main coon cat? Okay, so hopefully now this will call up the API, uh, right? Okay, so yes, I'm gonna allow uh, to talk to the API. Talking to the API. Uh, okay, so there was an issue. Would you like to try another beer? Just give me a random cat then. So the point was not to get the cat, but you can see it kind of worked and it talked to the API we created, right? But let's see if we can get a cat image here anyway. Here's a random cat for you to enjoy. <laughs> yeah. So you can see basically now we did create this action that can, yeah, use this API to get some cat images. So basically if you want to use this OpenAI schema GPT, I'm going to leave it a link below and you can kind of just run your documentation through that. And you can end up with this schema that you can use in your GPTs, right? So it's pretty easy to set up, but uh, you can see down here there are possibilities to create many actions. So it can get complicated too. And you can combine this with code interpreter and stuff. So there are possibilities to create advanced uh, GPTs. So yeah, that's basically what I had to say about the GPT store for now. I think we're gonna take a closer look maybe next week. We might do another video to see how this pans out. Uh, it's gonna be interesting, but... Like I said, my hopes are pretty low and I'm not gonna go like 100% into this. I'm gonna test it out and that's basically it. So if you if you enjoyed this, please leave a like on the video or give me a comment. Say what kind of ideas do you have. Uh, other than that, thank you for tuning in and I hopefully I'll see you again on Wednesday.